Hey, Guillermo. Welcome to the Your Sorority Journey podcast for our mini series recruitment takeover. Cassie, so excited to be here. Thanks for the invite. Of course. When I was thinking about this episode, Instagram speaks louder than round one. I was like, I can't think of anyone better than Guillermo or Lynn to have on the recruitment takeover series. And we got to have Lynn on last year. So I was like, all right, we need a fraternity expert to come in, specifically a digital storytelling expert to come in and just like give us some best tips for how to prepare our social media platforms before recruitment. Absolutely. Now's the time. It's going on. It's happening now. And we have to be more intentional with how we're telling our story, you know, pictures and fun graphics. We got to do more than that. So yeah, happy to be here. So let's just like kick things off with Guillermo. What do you think the role social media, you can talk about different platforms specifically, but just like social media as a whole plays in, let's talk specifically about sorority recruitment. Yeah, absolutely. When you think about Palinic sorority recruitment, people are doing their research now and you yeah. have to think about your different audiences. We have to think that we were, you know, we're still in the outskirts of a pandemic. So a lot of people are doing things for the first time. So whether that be going to college, whether that be wanting to join a sorority. So you have to make sure that your, your content is relevant and it's updated because you have to think about parents, family, stakeholders, alumni, they're looking at all of your content and you just, you just, you just gotta make sure it's updated. It's consistent. And it really does align with your values and who you are as an organization. That's so good. I think, especially in like such uh, in like elevated digital age after the pandemic, right? That's where people are getting all their information. Like they're not going to your table. They aren't going to like, uh, like first day of school walk around, right? That's not the first introduction they have with your like organization or your community or you as a person, right? They're like clicking on the individual sisters who are tagged in your posts, right? They want to see everything. And so when I think about um, how important social media is right now, I also think about all the like false information or like stereotypes that there are on those like, um, like sarcastic fraternity and sorority accounts that like aren't- Yeah, helping. the memes. Exactly. They aren't helping like perpetuate what we want to be known for. What's your take on like all of the like, false advertising too. You know, we look at them, we laugh, we send them to our friends. Uh, the thing is our potential new members are going to think that's the reality of it. You look at TikTok when it's such an organic platform and it's super fun. And I feel like it really got super popular because for a really long time, like uh, mid 2010, late 2010s, that super glossy Instagram look was about perfection. And TikTok said, we're going to do something completely different. And totally. from that, like, People want to do more from it. And yes, we have those funny moments. We have those inside jokes and that gets the viral hits and all the likes and the comments. Right. At the same time, we're going to show our new members. They're going to think that that's what they're getting. When you look at all the, yeah. all the meme accounts, all the action accounts, all the crazy things that have happened that we've captured and put on social media, and then they get to campus and they have to go to meetings and leadership requirements right. and different different conversations and things that they have to do they're going to be like, no one's talking about this. Right. So those are the things you're going to have to talk about on your social media. You can, you can post a million pictures of your sorority members in Italy or in Greece in front of an awesome background or the ocean. Right. Guess what? That's not realistic. That's yeah. not you running to class. That's mm. not you saying I need help from one of my sisters on a class mm -hmm. or can someone drop me off or bring me some food to, to you know, the architecture yeah. building. Like we got to be real. We got to be real. And I think the other thing that's like so wise about that is like you said, two things early on that I thought were really important. We have to be relevant. And what was the other piece you said? Relevant and updated. That's that was the second one. Because I think sometimes what happens is we want to be like so informative. We want to like give all the dates, give like the schedule, give so much information that we don't make it like fun and engaging, or we focus so much on the aesthetic that we miss all the details, right? And so no one knows what they're yep. getting themselves into. So what does like a healthy balance do you think look like between like healthy, like aesthetics, fun? This is a social organization. You're going to have a good time. Yes. You might get to study abroad. Maybe you'll go to Greece, but like, that's not your day to day. <laughs> so what does like an <laughs> updated fun like profile look like to properly reflect your organization's experience? 
All right, so that's one of the biggest trends that I'm seeing right now. You are seeing graphics, information, information, where they live, phone number, email. Yes, that's super important. But like you said, you, you're either on one end where it's super informative or the other end where it's too aesthetic and it's just like, is this a travel ad? Is this just like, I'm not sure what this is. So yeah. how do you meet it in the middle? And how you do that is by, I think reels and video is something that's really helpful. So you totally. can put information over video, you can put music in it and you can make it aesthetically pleasing while still putting your key points while you're mm. introducing people. Yeah. One of the, something I'm really trying to get started on fraternity social media and sorority social media is a quick video of members going around like this, being realistic and they're sharing where they're from, just our hometown. So Villa Park, Illinois, pass it on to the next sister. You edit those videos, put them together. It's informative, it has information and it's mm. letting your audience know where your members are from. What's their hometown? What does that look yeah. like for them? You're providing information, but you're still making it fun. And there's yeah. ways to do that. And you're just motivating me more to make more content as examples for the audiences. Yeah, totally. And I, I do think there's something to be said. And I think you and I have to like, find this healthy balance of like being relevant to around topics that um, potential new members, recruiters, uh, chapter officers are already looking for, right? If it's like, I don't know, if it's language that maybe isn't like you and I's favorite or like officers, they don't like want to perpetuate that language. But in all reality, it is something that people are looking for, like finding that balance between like poking fun at something with a trending audio on TikTok while also uh, using maybe that like increase in views or connections that we're gaining to then like hit them with something like informative. Like sometimes there are yes. posts that are like targeted toward different things that I think can be really helpful too. I completely uh, agree. Yeah. I, uh, we've been talking a lot about chapter accounts, but I know that we're going to have some like potential new members listening. And I also think a lot of this, um, conversation could potentially be like really well targeted for recruiters too. Yes. What do you think the role of like a personal account, a uh, personal branding has to do in recruitment? All right. So personal branding is something that's super important because, you know, I'm going on a page and so many people aren't posting or they're not posting about their experience with something worthwhile about their sorority experience. You yeah. know, how can you post a memory from this past semester or this past year and your, your sorority help you through that? Because PNMs, they're going to be looking through individual member profiles. I'm sure you, mm -hmm. you have, you know, your chapter in your profile, big tip, make sure to tag your chapter account in your Instagram profile. Yeah. So people can click on that account more because a lot of people are just putting letters and we have to remind ourselves, did you know Greek letters before you joined? I didn't no. know Greek letters. I did letters. not, no. So like, yeah. we've got to spell it out, you know? So yeah. it's, if it says, if it says gamma, 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 spell it out and then put the Greek letters in parentheses. But when it comes to that personal branding, we're, we're representing ourselves when we are putting our personal um, profiles out there. So yeah. we got to share those amazing moments on our profiles. And we honestly, we also can't ignore Facebook because that's where our families are. That's yeah. where our different audiences are. Imagine that connection that might be brought up. It's like, oh, you know, my aunt's um, friend's daughter is coming to this campus. Yeah. How do we, how do we get people talking about our groups? Yeah, that's so good. And when I think about personal brand too, another thing that often comes to mind is like you just said, if a sister is tagged in a photo on, let's say Arizona State Sigma Kappa's Instagram, if I'm a PNM, I want to get to know the members too, right? Like I might like have put together that whoever is running that chapter account is like pretty curated, right? And if you are a social media manager who is listening to this episode, we think you're curated. We we think really highly of you, okay? <laughs> yes. But, but we Keep want it to up. See, it's hard. It is so hard. But we also want to see like what individual members um, experiences are both in their chapter and outside of their chapter. Like what did they do over the summer? Like what is their personality like? And so I think sisters, if you are a recruiter and you are tagged in a chapter photo, like on your Instagram, or you have your airs on a state Sigma Kappa, for an example, in your bio, you want to be looking at what you're posting. And if it's telling a holistic story about who you are, because I think that's also playing a, a role in how you represent your chapter and yourself just for future things too. It's good to have like a holistic to be presenting a holistic person on your personal brand as well. 
Yes, sorority members are some of the best leaders I've ever met. Yeah. How does how are you portraying that onto your social media? Mm. You are parts of internships. You're parts of um, expeditions, parts of committees. People, you know, care about what you're doing, and we're not posting all that. And yeah, it's got to be a mix of your fun yeah. pictures, of your like travel pictures, of the great stuff that you're doing. It says like I am a powerful and intelligent woman and this sorority has helped me develop that even more yeah I also want to talk about potential new members who are coming to college who maybe haven't thought a lot about their personal brand right and uh some of the tips that we've been getting giving that her sorority journey um is doing for our like 30 day recruitment ready tips and tricks um are around values and like knowing the kind of sister that you want to be to your chapter What's, what are some tips that you have around how a potential new member, a woman who is not affiliated with an organization, can be uh, presenting herself and the kind of person that she wants to be to her future chapter on social media before she even shows up for round one? Yeah, I got this question a lot from either PNMs or parents when I when, when I was a Greek advisor on campuses, talking to them at orientations or at information sessions. And I always say, like, I know it's corny, but it's corny because it's true. You have to be yourself and choose how you want to put yourself out there because people yeah. are going to look you up just like you're looking them up. Yeah. So it's mutual selection. We know what that looks like. We know how that works. So be be quirky, talk about what makes you, you, like, what is something that maybe not a lot of people know about you that, that you collect or that you're really invested or interested in. Uh, People are really one dimensional. Uh, Sorry. People are more than one dimension. They're more than one thing. They're layered. And we have to, we have to put that out there. We can't think that our social media profiles are just our resumes for Mm -hmm. sororities. I think that's a really negative, Mm. false statehood that people put out there. And they don't give sorority women enough credit during the recruitment process because they think that they're looking for one look or one yeah. thing. When in reality, I really do believe, like I said, sorority women are some of the best leaders that I know. They want more than that. Talk yep. about you being on student council. Talk about you being in band. Talk about you being in field hockey, debate team, whatever that looked like for you. Or if you volunteer, mm. or if you're really invested in your family and you're not able to participate, you weren't able to participate in those activities. Yeah. Bring yourself out in your media because people are going to be looking at you. I also think PNMs who are listening, it's super important to remember that the relationships you have with your friends from high school, the relationships that you have with your family, the um, the camp that you've been volunteering at forever, those are all things we want to know about because those yes. are really indicative of your membership potential, right? Loyalty, friendship, commitment, especially like year after year. If that's what your summer is filled with, post about it. We want to know like about your grandma who means a ton to you. We want to know about your best friend that are, you're like, so sad is going to a college across the country. Like you can share those things and know that, especially if the recruiter that you happen to be talking to has seen you on social media before, it'll be a really easy connection point for you to bring up in recruitment because we don't need to hear about, uh, national charity league. If that's something that you didn't care a ton about, but was something that you were involved in because you felt like you had to, or um, even student council or anything that you're not super passionate about. We want to hear what you are super passionate about. And so if you want to talk about that for a long time, post about that. I think it's a direct correlation. I completely agree. When And when you look at what um, if you're a PNM who thinks you're just going to get really cool t-shirts and go to parties and yeah. look cool with your friends, like that's why on our chapter accounts, we have to be posting relevant and real information. Yeah. Also with our PNM accounts, be yourself, put yourself out there and talk about what you are invested in because joining a sorority is such a big commitment. Yeah, such a big commitment. And anything that you have done in the past that demonstrates that level of commitment, maybe it's time to post about it. And I do think, um, Guillermo, that our best takeaway, and maybe you tell me what you think, I think our best takeaway, if you are a social media manager or you are any human with a personal Instagram or TikTok account, is to go audit your account right now, today. It's Friday. Maybe you do it this weekend. Um, It's June. So you have time. No one has seen your stuff yet, right? You've got time to build a brand over the next couple months if you're going through recruitment this fall. So Guillermo, 
give me like your top three things that people should go audit. I'll give my top three things um, for people yes. to go do right now. All right. So the top three things that I want you to audit, I want to make sure that you are making and putting your most relevant content up top. So use the archive button as your friend. Mm, if something yes. is not relevant to you from 2014, 2013 years ago, whenever you might've been in middle school or whenever you first got your account, archive it. So your main information is at the top of your profile. So that would be number one. Number two is making sure that you are following relevant accounts. So are you following yes. the accounts of the university that you're going to be going to, to make sure that you have relevant information, follow the city, follow where you're going to be a part of when, in what community you're going to be joining. Yeah. Because when you do an audit, you look at who you are following and also who you're not and mm -hmm. how you want to make yourself more informed. You are going to get a million pieces of information all at once. And that's mm -hmm. what it's going to look like when you step on a campus. So I know I'm someone who needs to get information to feel a little bit more calmer. So I'm going to do research ahead of time. Yeah. And then number three, when it comes to auditing your account, uh, this might be more specific to chapters, but I would say like, what are you doing to be, to post the moments that mean a lot to your group and to your organization so people can learn more about you, just like it goes to your PNMs. Mm. Audit that, put it in and say, are we doing that enough? Or is this just aesthetic? Are we just putting pictures of quotes? Are we just putting, put it, putting stock images of cool books? seen that in a couple places. We gotta be, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta update. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. I think those, those three things are so good. Let's just like rehash them really fast. So archive is your friend, make sure you're archiving, even if you've posted it in like, I would even say the past two months and it's not reflective of something that you want PNMs to see as a chapter or as a PNM or a recruiter, something that maybe isn't reflective of your values. And that's not for anyone else to decide. That's for you to decide. You to make a judgment call on. Use the archive. It doesn't have to go away forever, but maybe just for a season. I love the follow relevant accounts. I'm also going to challenge all PNMs, recruiters, recruitment counselors, chapters, follow every sorority, every organization yeah. on your campus. It's time for you to know what's going on in other groups too. Follow your Panhellenic, follow your FSL page so that you know what's going on, not only in the community, also in your chapters. And then number three, post the moments that matter most. I think that's so good, Guillermo. The only yeah. things that I want to add to that is I think highlights are your friend too on Instagram. Yes. If you can identify, let's maybe as a chapter, what your top couple values are or your top events are, pulling all the stories that you've posted or will post about this summer to group them together. So when a PM is looking for what do they do for sisterhood or Personal growth seems to matter a lot to them. How do they promote that? They can just tap through your, your highlight. I would keep it between uh, 10 and 15 stories so it's not overwhelming. Yeah. And just yes. uh, the most important <laughs> things, the events, the moments, the even like testimonials from your members that help demonstrate how you live out that value or why that event means a lot to you. Um, for individuals, maybe think about your personal brand. What are things that you're involved in um, or things that mean a lot to you that you could highlight again in 10 to 15 stories over the next couple months that you could put in those highlights. So my number one is highlights. For chapters, I want everybody to go to their website. I want them to see what on earth is on their website. Are your current executive board members on your website or is it your exec from 2014, which is the year I joined for context. So it's time to do an overhaul on those websites um, and make sure that all the information is super streamlined. And then let me think, I think number three is try a new platform. If you haven't tried out TikTok as a chapter, um, you can head to her sorority journey uh, and get some ideas of ways that you can promote sor the sorority experience on TikTok. Yes. Um, Pinterest, YouTube, those are all great places that PNMs are already hanging out. Um, or for individuals, try a new platform and see what happens knowing that Instagram is the new round one. It speaks louder than those individual or uh, really quick conversations that you're going to have at rapid fire speed with like eight PNMs or eight recruiters. So make sure that you are doing your due diligence to communicate who you are and what you're looking for from a chapter or a sister before you show up for recruitment. Any final thoughts, Guillermo? Yeah, I think you, you said them, you shared them and go play around on TikTok, go have fun and just learn. I think it's, it's such a fun platform. You can be more 
more genuine and we need that. So I appreciate you having me. Oh, of course. Um, Guillermo is the creative behind Fraternity Social Media, working in cahoots with Lynn O'Dell over at Sorority Social Media. Make sure to go follow both of them. Uh, Guillermo, where can they find you on TikTok? Yes, you can find me on TikTok. Right now, I'm just on my personal one, so I'm learning. So you send me information, send me things that are funny. You can send them to Guillermo FX because Perfect. my Instagram is Guillermo XF, but for TikTok, it's Guillermo FX. I love it. And then friends, if you don't already, make sure to follow her sorority journey on both Instagram and TikTok. Thanks so much for uh, joining me today, Guillermo. This was so helpful for our sister friends getting ready for recruitment. Always happy to help. Thank you again. Perfect.